Today, we're going to shine one of my favorite pair of shoes, my St. Crispin uh, Dark Brown Capto Oxfords. These are a special pair of shoes that I had made through their MTO program, and you can see uh, it's got calfskin in the front, but then the rear quarters is actually a dark brown suede. I really enjoy the uh, informality of this shoe. I mean, it's a dark brown. I wear it quite casually. Uh, even with the outfit I'm wearing today, this shoe would go perfect, and it's a great compliment to the many pairs of black Capto Oxfords you all know that I have in my wardrobe. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. As you can see, this shoe is a little bit of a workhorse for me, and it's been long overdue for a proper shoe shine. You can see that the mirror gloss is starting to crack a little bit on the toes, and we really have scuffing kind of all around the toes. Uh, and you can even see some light discoloration and scuffing uh, from the vamp that, again, is just due to normal wear and tear. Now, this is a great illustration of the answer to the question of how often should I shine my shoes. Uh, really, the answer to that is obvious. You should shine your shoes whenever they look like they need to be shined, and you can see that this pair is long overdue. Now, a unique characteristic of this shoe, of course, is this suede quarters, and so I have some products here that we're gonna use to clean the suede. It's not very dirty, so I'm not going to shampoo it with a product like the Saphir Omni Net and Yacht, uh, but if it was very dirty, I, of course, could shampoo it first and then polish the shoe. Just to review our steps here, it's gonna be quite a thorough shoe shine. First, I'm going to condition and clean the leather using the Saphir Renovateur. Then I'm going to condition the shoe using the Saphir Pomadeur Cream Polish. What's great about the Pomadeur Cream Polish, again, is the high concentration of pigments is going to do a great job of resaturating that finish and smoothing it out. And then I'm going to do an entire coat of a Saphir Pat Deluxe Wax Polish on the entire shoe. This, again, will help elevate the shine a little bit, uh, protect the leather. Uh, and then I'm going to focus uh, on the toe cap using the Saphir Mirror Glass and a dark brown uh, and a little bit of Pat Deluxe to elevate that shine, similar to what this was before it got scuffed. And then on the back of the shoes, uh, I'm going to use a Saphir Gummadin to remove some of the uh, some of the hard stains on the suede, uh, and then just a simple suede brush to help clean those off. We'll finish the edges and heels using the Pomadeur Cream Polish uh, and the Mirror Gloss. And then of course, last but not least, as you can see, these shoelaces are quite worn, so I'm gonna replace these with a new pair of our Kirby Allison Wellington shoelaces. So first, I'm going to remove the shoelaces. Many of you know that uh, I'm not a huge fan of removing shoelaces every single time you shine a pair of shoes just because it does produce a lot of extra uh, strain on the eyelets uh, of the shoe. But since I plan on replacing these anyway, I'm going to go ahead and remove them first. So here we are. So first I'm going to just lightly buff the shoe. Uh, this is using our Yak Hair Brush. Essentially what I'm doing here is just really cleaning the shoe off a little bit. Again, we're going to polish it, but this will get any superficial dirt uh, off of the leather. Next, I'm going to use the Saphir Renovateur. Now, the Saphir Renovateur is like liquid gold for your shoes. Uh, it's an excellent conditioner. It's a gentle cleaner. And so this is uh, going to help nourish and hydrate the skin. Uh, and ensure that it stays nice and soft and supple. Now, you wanna apply this carefully, especially on these suede shoes, to make sure that I don't get any on the suede uppers. So you have to be a little bit careful here. I'm even going to apply it to the toe cap here. Um, so again, I'm going to use a little bit more pressure on the toe cap because I really want to work it into the polish. Uh, part of the purpose uh, of the cream polishes is again with those solvents is to help remove any of the old layers of polish. Now I'm not completely stripping the shoe, uh, but you really do want to remove you know, the top one to two layers uh, just to help pull those off because those are the ones that inevitably get dirty and damaged. So by pulling that off, uh, I will, uh, it'll make renewing the shine uh, even easier. Working that into the leather, we'll set that aside and let that polish dry.
Now I'm using my high shine chamois here. Excellent chamois, especially for producing that high shine. Now that the Saphir Renovator is dried, I'm gonna buff it off using our Wellington pig bristle brush. I like the pig bristle brush because the bristle is stiffer than traditional horsehair. So it's gonna do a better job buffing that polish off and cleaning the leather, uh, which is really our goal here with this first coat of the Saphir Renovator. Now you can see that the leather has darkened slightly, and that's just because the Saphir Renovator has nourished and uh, hydrated this leather. So naturally it's going to darken a bit, uh, and that just tells you that this is really feeding that leather, which is what you want it to do. Okay, so here we are. We've applied the first coat of the Saphir Renovator. Again, the purpose of the Saphir Renovator uh, is just to condition, to nourish the leather, to really feed it. It helps prevent the leather from cracking, uh, which will occur if the leather becomes too dry. Uh, and it just lightly cleans you know, any of the top layers of waxes, uh, which is what we want with this first step. Now, you can see that the Renovator is a neutral. It doesn't contain any pigment. Uh, now, if your shoes didn't need pigment, you could use this and jump straight to a wax polish. But because it has been such a long time since I've polished these shoes, uh, next, I really do want to begin to reintroduce pigment back into this leather. And for that, I'm gonna use the Saphir Pomander Cream Polish. It's an exceptional cream polish. Uh, not only does it do a great job uh, nourishing and hydrating the leather, just like the Saphir Renovator, but it's got three to five times more pigment than ordinary cream polishes. So it's gonna really help reestablish the finish here. One of the things I love about the Saphir Medal d'Or is they've got over 13 different colors. Uh, so for this shoe, I'm gonna use the Havana Brown, uh, the number 34. It's a nice kind of dark, tobacco knee brown, uh, which again is gonna be perfect for this leather. And so I'm going to apply this uh, with the cotton chamois uh, and allow it to sit onto the leather. Now with all creams, the longer you let those cream polishes sit on the leather, the more time that leather is gonna have to really absorb uh, the nourishment there. So if you have time, uh, I really recommend shining your shoes or shining multiple pairs uh, so that you can extend the amount of time that you're leaving the cream polishes on your shoe. Uh, but anything you know uh, above three or four minutes is really uh, sufficient to allow that to really work. But there's certainly no harm in letting this sit on the leather longer. Now on the toe cap, I'm applying medium to firm pressure as I work this polish into the leather. And the reason for that is because uh, you really wanna work that buildup of hard waxes because of the mirror shine. And so this polish, of course, uh, has solvents in it which are gonna help reliquify and really loosen that wax polish. And so by using medium to firm pressure, you know, you're working that, you're smoothing it out. And that's what allows you uh, to really save a mirror shine uh, and rejuvenate it without having to totally strip it back down to the base leather and begin from scratch. So by, again, working that polish uh, into the leather, you're able to kind of redistribute those hard waxes 
uh, and hopefully smooth them out so that any kind of deeper scuffs that you have in the waxes themselves uh, are smoothed. So I'm working this into the leather. Nice coat. I'm going to set this shoe aside and begin on the next one. I'm just switching back and forth between my pig bristle brush and our yak hair buffing brush. You could just as easily use a horse hair brush here, uh, but the, the softer bristle and the yak hair brush is gonna help me elevate that shine. It's a different texture than the pig hair, so it's just it's gonna provide a little bit of a buffing, a different buffing dynamic. And so you can see how this yak hair brush, you know, really begins to elevate that shine, but I'm using the pig bristle brush to remove any excessive buildup off of the leather. Okay, so just after one coat of the Saphir Renovator and one coat of the Pomadeur Cream Polish, you can really see how much better these shoes are looking. Uh, I can't tell you how important using a pigmented cream polish is now, for the total care of a pair of dress shoes. Uh, not only is a cream polish gonna help nourish uh, and really feed this leather to keep it soft and supple to prevent any cracking, but the pigments are really important to just refinishing the shoe. You can see all that light scuffing I had kind of in and around the sides and the vamp uh, have been really totally concealed with the pigments and the waxes in this cream polish. And so I recommend that if you're only gonna use one polish for the care of your shoes, it really should be a pigmented cream polish. Now, if you're looking for uh, to really elevate the level of your care, of course, the Saphir Renovator and some wax polishes are going to absolutely help take better care of your shoes and uh, keep it looking uh, even better. But if you're just gonna use something, a pigmented cream polish uh, really covers uh, all of your basics. So you can see uh, everything is looking much better here uh, just after one coat of the Saphir Pomadeur Cream Polish. Now next what I'm gonna do is transition to using a wax polish. Now the difference between a wax polish and a cream polish uh, really is the higher concentration of those hard waxes. So in the Saphir Pat Deluxe we have the addition of beeswax, which again is a harder wax than what you find in the cream polish. The Mountain Wax, which again is gonna help protect the leather and elevate that shine. So I like to really apply uh, all of my wax polishes exclusively using a cotton chamois, uh, and our uh, Kirby Allison Wellington High Shine Chamois is perfect for wax polishes. So I'm going to uh, get some wax on my chamois. I'm using a dark brown here, uh, and then I'm going to work it into the leather. Now what I love about the Saphir Pat Deluxe, again, is that high concentrations of solvents. It's a much wetter polish uh, than the Mirror Gloss, and then uh, much wetter than more traditional uh, commonly found waxes. And by wet, what I mean is it's got a higher concentration of solvents uh, in the polish. It uses an all-natural pine-based uh, turpentine, which again is going to help further feed that leather uh, and then also reliquify any of those wax deposits on the leather itself to make sure that you're able to smooth those out. So again, medium to firm pressure uh, on the toe, working this in. Nice, even coat. Less is more. Uh, if you apply too much polish, uh, then it just means you have to spend more time buffing in order to produce a shine.
take that chamois off. I am going to do just a real light buff uh, with a horsehair brush just to quickly remove any excessive wax polish, but then we're gonna buff using the chamois. Light buff. So next is the fun. So I've got a high shine uh, water dispenser. I've got my high shine chamois. As you can see, this has gotten plenty of use. Uh, you can easily wash a chamois in a little bit of hot water uh, and uh, dish soap or laundry detergent. Uh, and so next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little bit of water on this, right? So just a little bit of water on the chamois. I'm gonna just tap this a little bit, right? I just want a little bit of polish. I'm really not going for much. And then what I'm gonna do is really buff this fast. Now what I'm trying to do is to begin to really buff and build a shine uh, on these wax polishes with a little bit of water and this will produce a higher shine uh, with, uh, than a horsehair brush using the same amount of waxes. So, a um, little bit of water. You could just leave it with the horsehair brush. I mean, of course, that is totally sufficient, uh, but I'm gonna see what I can do in terms of building this shine. So after just one coat of the Saphir Pat Deluxe, a little bit of buffing, you can see I'm really developing a nice shine you know, along these vamps. Uh, and it, you know, again, is part of the reasons I just love a good wax polish. It produces a beautiful shine. Uh, I think this is sufficient for the vamps themselves. Uh, you really wanna be careful about uh, applying too much wax polish across the vamp of a shoe, uh, because if you have too large of a buildup of hard waxes, uh, the moment that you flex this vamp, all those waxes are gonna crack and produce a white residue. Uh, I recommend one, maximum two coats of a wax polish across the vamps. Now that said, the toes are where you can really have fun with the wax polish. And so we're gonna work on really building the mirror shine uh, on these toes next. Now, the greatest secret, you know, the trick to building a high gloss mirror shine uh, on the toes of a pair of shoes is really using a product like our mirror gloss. Uh, the Saphir mirror gloss here uh, has a higher concentration of hard waxes, which is what's going to allow you to build up that shine faster. It has a lower solvent concentration and it also than the Pat Deluxe, you can see just how hard this is and that prevents those waxes from really uh, softening too much and being pulled off that leather. So this is a, a great shortcut. It really works great in conjunction uh, with the high shine chamois and a little bit of Pat Deluxe uh, because at the end I like to use the higher concentrations of the Pat Deluxe to provide that final buff to really elevate that shine and bring it out. But first we have to establish that hard wax foundation and for that we have the mirror gloss. Now one of the other secrets to the mirror gloss is that um, the more you shine your shoes, the easier it is to produce a mirror shine because again, those hard waxes you know, are still on the leather. So you can see, even though I clean this with the Renovateur, a little bit of uh, pomander cream polish and some wax polish, I still have waxes on here that are gonna help me produce that mirror shine. It's much easier producing a mirror shine uh, on uh, an older pair of shoes that you've shined already than a pair of shoes that you're polishing for the first time. So I'm gonna apply, uh, really what I recommend is a 
relatively generous coat uh, of the mirror gloss to these caps. Now it's essential after you apply the mirror glass to allow it to dry. All of those solvents have to evaporate, the waxes have to harden before you can work on elevating that shine and buffing it. So I recommend a few minutes. If you have a fan or a blow dryer uh, with cool air, you can help accelerate that. And again, one of the benefits of the low solvent concentration of the mirror glass is that those waxes harden much faster than what you get with the Pat Deluxe. Okay, so once that's dried a little bit, I'm gonna find a clean area of my chamois. And next we're gonna use just a little bit of water. You don't want too much, just enough to really uh, lubricate that chamois and allow it to uh, create some friction across the wax. And then you're gonna begin buffing. Now. This initial buff really takes a while, so you don't want to rush it, but I'm using medium pressure, you know, adding a little bit of water, and you just have to sit here and be patient as that shine begins to develop. Now you can tap your wax polish, again, just to pick up a little bit of wax and solvents. You don't want to do that too often, but just to help kind of smooth that out. Chamois has to be tight across the fingers. Now what we're doing here is we're building up those layers of hard waxes, right? So we're gonna apply a layer of the mirror gloss, we're gonna buff it to a shine, and then what we're gonna do is apply another layer of mirror shine. And the more layers that you get, the smoother that surface becomes, uh, and the higher gloss each successive layer is gonna buff to. Now you can see, because again, we had that foundation of hard waxes, just after one layer and a little bit of buffing, you can see we're already getting a nice little mirror shine. But after two or three layers of that mirror gloss, once we start working in a little bit of the Pat Deluxe, uh, we're gonna see this really come alive. So now I'm doing my second coat of the mirror gloss. Once you feel that start to dry, then you wanna set it aside and let that sit for a few minutes. Perfect opportunity to work on the next shoe. A Little bit of water. All right. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start buffing that first layer off of the shoe. So the shine is developing nicely. We're going to add the second coat of mirror glass onto this left shoe. Sit. Now 
Now, as I'm buffing this, I'm just going to take a little bit of Pat Deluxe. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm really picking up the solvents. I just want a tiny, tiny bit that really kind of helps uh, augment the water. Uh, and the purpose is, is those solvents kind of help that chamois glide. It helps, you know, loosen those waxes on the surface just a little bit so that whenever you bring the chamois over it with a little bit of water, it's going to help shine those. medium to firm pressure. I really want to build up the heat here. Again, it's that friction going across those waxes once they dry. That's really going to help shine them. And you can see that's really, I mean, I can already see myself. I mean, that's developing beautifully. Uh, again, I can't tell you uh, how effective the mirror gloss is. I mean, it used to take three times as long, if not longer, uh, just doing this with the Pat Deluxe again because it was so solvent rich. Every single time you would apply the Pat Deluxe because of that high concentration of solvents, uh, it was like going three steps forward, two steps back. Whereas the Mirror Gloss, because it's got that high concentration of hard waxes, the low solvent uh, ratio, uh, it really dries quickly and doesn't pull the prior layer off like the Pat Deluxe did. So this is layer three. Let's apply that. Set that shoe aside. All right. Now you don't want too much water on the chamois. That's why I'm just gently tapping it against my leather uh, shoe shine carpet. But here we are. We're going to buff. I'm going to pick up a little bit of Pat Deluxe, hardly any at all. If you feel your chamois begin to drag across the leather, add some water. And again, once you build that foundation, what we're doing is we're buffing. So we really want to use uh, some speed, some water, some pressure. There's nothing like a beautifully bold pair of toes, a nice mirror shine on a pair of cap toe oxfords to really set you apart. I mean, this is just one of those small details that uh, whenever you walk into a room, that automatically elevates you above everyone else there. It just shows that you've taken the time uh, in the morning uh, to really mind uh, the details, uh, to groom your look, uh, and more than anything else, it's just a sign of respect that you respect yourself, that you respect other people, uh, that your company is important enough uh, for you to really make sure that you're looking uh, your best. You can see here towards the end, a little bit of water. Uh, you know, as you, as you get towards the end of the mirror shine, you want to do everything in smaller increments, less wax, less water, uh, and more pressure because again, what we're doing is we've got that foundation of hard waxes. It's just a matter of uh, really shining it, of buffing it with that fast action, the friction, and a little bit of heat. But man, that is incredible. I mean, even I'm proud of myself with that. So that is amazing. I think I'm done with this shoe uh, for the toe cap. Let's go back to the right one and see if we can match that. So here, again, we're getting towards the end of this mirror shine, just a little bit of wax polish. You can see it go on there. Uh, and I'm really, I'm, honestly, I'm using firm pressure at this point. I want to generate as much heat, as much friction as possible to really shine those waxes. Wow. I mean, I can see myself. I mean, that's the true test. A beautiful mirror shine. I mean, this was with just three coats of the mirror gloss. Uh, again, I can't tell you uh, how effective this Saphir mirror gloss is. It's really a game changer whenever it comes to producing a really high quality mirror shine. I mean, it used to take ages with the Pat Deluxe 
You know, now with uh, you know, a nice foundation, a little bit of mirror gloss, the Pat Deluxe, uh, the High Shine Chamois, I mean, you can produce an absolutely incredible, long-lasting mirror shine. I mean, you know, you could never get something like this in a shine stand. Uh, this is really one of those details that if you're not doing it yourself, uh, you'll never achieve this. And so uh, this is what I love here at Kirby Allison Hanger Project, is this level of shine. I mean, just look at how these shoes uh, are totally renewed. I mean, they looked terrible whenever we started with them. And, uh, you know, they look better than new now, to be totally honest. So, beautiful mirror shine. The uppers have been totally reworked. Uh, there's a few other kind of uh, odds and ends we're going to work on next. Now, next, what I'm going to do uh, is do a little bit of maintenance to the suede. Uh, on a normal pair of shoes, you really wouldn't do this because these are quite special. Uh, but I've got a product here. It's the Saphir Gomadin Suede Eraser. Uh, and what this is used for is for removing any type of hard stains like this right here, anything that's really worked into the leather that you're not going to use uh, a traditional suede brush to get rid of. Uh, this is a great product. Now to use it, you're going to make a little bit of a mess, but you just want to work this into the leather. And this is really like spot treating. So it's just taking out those spots. You know, maybe, you know, maybe you were eating something and dropped it on your suede. You know, you don't want to go through the entire process of shampooing it. Uh, this helps just remove, you know, some of those more difficult to remove spots that a normal suede brush isn't going to work with. Now, after you do that, I've got a suede uh, brush. Now, on my suede brushes, I really prefer to use a natural bristled brush. Uh, this is our Kirby Allison uh, Hanger Project brush. It uses uh, what is uh, just a, a pig bristle, so it's stiff. Uh, it's not going to hurt the suede, uh, but it's going to help clean it. And so I'm just going to brush those off. So you can see, I mean, we've really kind of removed those spots here. I love suede. It's so easy to care for. Really, all you have to do is brush it. You definitely want to make sure that you mind your heels, especially in America where we spend a lot of time driving. Uh, the right heel uh, gets a lot of wear. And so again, just brushing that with a suede brush is going to make a big difference. Now, just as a trick, you can actually, even if you you have it, you could use a pig bristle brush. It's going to be more gentle, uh, but any type of stiff bristled, natural bristle brush is going to do a great job. So here, you see this mark right here? So that is a hard stain. And you can see that Gomadin really gets that out. So the Saphir Gomadin, a great little tool to have in your toolkit, especially if you're someone that wears a lot of suede. Uh, a suede brush is essential. Um, and so this is something you'd want to use more part as daily maintenance. We actually have a video on daily suede care. Uh, click the link in the upper uh, right-hand corner if you want to check that video out. Okay, we're almost done here. The only thing left are shoelaces uh, and then really the heels and the edges. So heels and edges we're going to do next. Uh, this is going to be kind of a light edge and heel treatment. Um, and I'm going to show you my favorite routine to use, uh, which is a combination of the Saphir Pomadeur Cream Polish and the Mirror Gloss, which is exceptional for edges and heels. Now the edges and heels are, are what I really consider to be the final frontier of shoe care. How well maintained your edges and heels are, uh, are, it's just that final stretch that really sets you apart. So there's two components of edge and heel care. Uh, first is going to be recoloring, and the second is going to be shining. So I recommend using a pigmented cream polish, like the Saphir Pomadeur Cream Polish is excellent for recoloring. Uh, you, you can use an alcohol-based uh, one also that's going to uh, be more permanent and really get into the leather. But if it's just maintenance, you know, using a little bit of pomander cream polish applied with your finger uh, is totally sufficient. All right, next we're going to apply it to the heel. I'm going to apply it more generously to the heel. Again, this is what needs it the most. So again, we're getting the pigment 
through the pigmented cream polish. You could also take some sandpaper to this if you wanted to, uh, to help smooth that leather. Okay, we've got the cream polish on there. Next, what I'm going to do, uh, really even before I buff it, is I'm going to apply uh, some of the mirror gloss. Now, the mirror gloss is exceptional for edges and heels because, again, it has that high concentration of hard waxes. You're going to want to apply it rather uh, liberally. You can do it with a cotton chamois. Uh, I'm going to use a small welt dauber here just because I'm going to be able to pick up more wax. You can see I've got a rather generous application. Uh, and I'm just going to put this on the edge of the heel. Now, especially on this pair of shoes with its um, suede, I'm going to want to be very careful in applying this. You want to really avoid getting, I'm going to smooth it out with my finger. So we've allowed that uh, hard wax polish to dry for a little bit. I have a special brush that I use uh, just for the edges. I think this is a pig bristle brush, stiffer bristle, shorter cut length. And I'm just going to use it to buff that mirror gloss the same way that you would uh, any other wax. I'm going to spend a little bit more time buffing again just because it was a thicker application. But you can really see uh, that wax begin to gloss up. I like this brush just because it has a very kind of narrow bristle. Now bespoke shoemakers will actually use something called an edge iron where they do this with heat. But the best we've got here is a little bit of, you know. Okay, here we are. We just finished our mirror shine. You can see these look absolutely beautiful. Uh, I can literally see myself in the reflection of both shoes. And it's that mirror shine, it's that final effort, that final step of the mirror shine, the edges, the heels, the vamps that really make this shoe look incredible. Now last, but certainly not least, what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the shoelaces. Uh, you know, shoelaces have a disproportionate effect on the look of a shoe. You know, a tired, old, worn pair of shoelaces uh, can really just bring down even an excellent shine. And so for that reason, I always re uh, recommend regularly replacing your shoelaces. We've got exceptional Wellington shoelaces that we have made uh, exclusively for us in Northampton uh, by the same company that makes uh, and supplies pretty much all of the English shoe trade. Uh, and uh, again, what makes our Wellington shoelaces, you know, really the highest quality is the fact that it's 100% natural fiber, 100% cotton, uh, highly waxed, uh, and then we have them in a large assortment of styles and sizes. For this shoe, I'm going to use a flat wax shoelace. It's slightly more casual in appearance than a round shoelace, which traditionally would be more formal. So we're going to pull this through. Uh, for dress shoes, uh, I'm a real fan of just straight lacing. That's the most formal. I feel like it looks the sharpest. And so that's what we're going to do here. We have an entire video on our website specifically about lacing. So if you have any questions about how to achieve this, take a look at that video, link in the description. I'm going to tie this using uh, the Berluti knot method. It's my favorite way to tie a shoelace. Uh, you'll see here in a second. Uh, it's a double knot, so it's guaranteed not to come undone. And you'll see here in a second that it lies nice and flat. It's a really unique knot, so look at that. We also have a video on how to tie the Brulutti knot uh, where I go into uh, great depth about how to do this. We do it in slow motion so you can follow along. 
Uh, if you don't know how to tie your shoes using uh, either the Baluti or the Parisian knot method, I would highly recommend taking a look at those videos. Not only will it prevent you from ever having to retie your shoes throughout the day, uh, it is just a much more elegant and beautiful knot. Voila, look at these shoes. Uh, I mean, it's remarkable the difference of these shoes uh, from where we've begun. Uh, just a little bit of time, this probably took an hour. Uh, Saphir Renovateur, Pomadeur Cream Polish, uh, some Saphir Pat Deluxe and Mirror Gloss Wax, new Kirby Allison Wellington shoelaces. Uh, and these shoes are, have totally been transformed from something that looked heavily worn uh, to an absolutely beautiful, well-polished pair of shoes. If you have any questions about anything I did in this shoe shine tutorial, uh, please ask me in the comments section below. I enjoy getting back to as many of those questions as possible. And of course, please visit hangerproject.com where we have all of these products that we used uh, for you to purchase. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality craftsmanship and tradition. Thanks for joining me.